Hello again. So we have another video today, and this one is actually on this motherboard here. And this is the ASRock C390 Pro 4. So it's a Z390 ATX motherboard. That's actually the cheapest board on Amazon, or one of the cheapest Z390 boards. I believe it's the cheapest ATX Z390 board. So that means it's the cheapest board that you can get for an Intel platform, mean that you can overclock. So we're gonna take a look at this board today, go through the features, the BIOS, some overclocking stuff, and uh, just generally see how well it does. So let's get started. So, in the box we get a I.O. shield, two SATA cables, the manual with a CD, as if anybody uses these things, two screws for the M.2 drives, and the motherboard. And for I.O. you get two USB 3 ports, PS2, VGA, DVI, HDMI, one USB 3.1, one Type-C, two USB 2s, gigabit, and three 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. You get four SATA ports, two on the bottom, so a total of six. You have a USB 3 header by the first set of SATA ports, and one by the bottom. You get two fan connectors on the bottom, and you get one fan connector above the CPU slot and one smack dab in the middle for the most awkward configuration possible. One, two M.2 slots and a M.2 slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You also have the full complement of four DIMM slots. You have a total of two 16x PCIe slots and three 4x slots that are notched so they accept any size of PCIe device. So here's a better shot of the 4x slots for those that aren't familiar with the notch slots. They can fit pretty much any length PCIe device. So here's the VRM heatsink and it is all aluminum and it's kind of small. We have a thick thermal pad there but it does have a little bit of surface area, so it might actually do some good with a fan next to it. There's 11 inductors. There are no doublers on this board. So near as I can figure it, you're probably working with 8 to 10 stages directly to the CPU for vCore. But there's probably a little bit less because you have things like the internal graphics. So let's uh, put this VRM heatsink back on. We're going to put a CPU in here, 9900K, put some memory in here, get it on the test bench, and we'll get back to you. So here's the BIOS. This is what you're greeted with when you first uh, start up the board. It's actually pretty convenient for uh, such a cheap board. We have CPU voltage, motherboard temperature, CPU temperature, and uh, we got fan speed, of course, when we have some general memory information. And to get out of this menu, all you gotta do is press F6, and we get to the real BIOS. So this is the real BIOS. And uh, for you, those of you that are familiar with Azeroth boards, this is gonna be pretty familiar. It's basically the same, um, and so here is the CPU stuff here. So we got all core ratio stuff. And it's pretty standard feature set. So we're gonna fast forward and skip through some of this stuff. So let's get to the voltage configuration. So we got load line and all the standard stuff here. There's offset and fixed voltage mode. I assume offset is adaptive. Fixed voltage is obviously you know, whatever you put in the box is what you're going to get. So the max voltage on here is 1.52 volts. So not really a board that I would use for any sort of extreme overclocking. 
but it's perfectly acceptable for ambient temperatures. And honestly, if you're going 1.4, you're probably thermally limited anyway. I found it interesting that it does default to load line of level one, which is uh, the highest level it has. So that might be something to watch out for those of you that don't want to use a level one load line there are also PLL voltages, which are only really used for extreme overclocking. So I'm thinking this is like a recycled BIOS or BIOS that Azeroth uses for most of their boards uh, because there's really no reason to modify these voltages if you're on ambient air cooling, so water cooling and air cooling. As for memory overclocking, we do have pretty much all the options here. So secondary, trinary, uh, RTLs, um, it's kind of odd that they decided to stick third timing and turnaround timings differently. Most boards, the stuff here under third timings are put under secondary timings and turnaround timings turn into trinary timings. But all the options are there, uh, so you shouldn't have any issues really overclocking it. So here are the actual temperatures of the VRM while I was in the BIOS. And I thought it was interesting because they're actually really high. So this is before any overclocking. This is completely stock. And I probably spent like 20 minutes in the BIOS. And there is no fan over the VRM. So we're looking at 41C for the heatsink temperatures, 42C for the inductors, and ambient is about 19C. And the thermocouples do have a tolerance of like 1 to 2C difference between them. So I would consider the heatsink and the inductors about the same temperature at this point. So we're going in real bench now. And all we're going to do is run this for about 15 to 20 minutes, get a temperature on the VRM at full load. So right now we're at 1.35 gigahertz. We're just going to run this and uh, see what temperatures we get. So here we are. This is the temperatures at full load, 1.35 gigahertz with a 9900K. So top, the top number is again the heatsink temperature. Second number is ambient. And third number is the inductor temperature. So we're looking at 90C pretty much all around, 90 plus C. And this is pretty hot, but do keep in mind this is without a fan. Okay, so we've done all of our testing and well, I have some problems with this board because using the same CPU at 1.28 volts on the Z390 Dark, we can get five gigahertz, super stable. And we had to use 1.35 volts on this one. Now on this one, Hardware Info and Railbench told us that it was 81C. Now using the same all-in-one thermal paste everything, except for the motherboard, on the Z390 Dark at 1.28 volts, CPU is 91C. So that's a 10C difference. So uh, I think that's too much uh, difference to be any sort of margin of error. So actually what I think might be happening is that this board isn't actually giving the CPU the voltage that you put in the BIOS. So if you, want, you put 1.25 volts, it's not giving it that voltage. So that could be an issue here. On the other hand, when I did increase the voltage enough, it did fine. The CPU wasn't super hot or anything. I just don't think the voltage in the BIOS is correct. Second issue, or third issue, the memory overclocking. So on uh, Azeroth's website, we can actually see that uh, it says this board supports up to 4400 megahertz. I challenge anyone to get an overclock on this board for 4400 megahertz, at least on air cooling. I wouldn't even boot the XMP profile of uh, the Flare X kit I have, and that's 3200 CL14. And uh, I had to tune it manually and everything to get this board to boot anything really but JDEX standard. And I even used my uh, Galax OC Labs kit. So it's like a 4500 megahertz kit. It goes up to like 4800 on uh, air cooling on the same CPU, this 9900K. It it wouldn't even go past 3600 megahertz. And uh, I, 
I had the, the toughest time trying to get the sport to even boot with that memory, at least past JDX standards. So it really doesn't like uh, A2 layout. And uh, well, good luck trying to get a, a kit that'll post past 4400 on, without an A2 layout. So I have some issues with the overclocking on this board. It's not that great. Um, if you're using an i3 or an i5, not messing with the memory, it might be okay. But just know that you're probably going to have to mess with the memory to get XMP profile to work on pretty much anything, at least that I've tested. I think I tested three different kits. So yeah, memory overclocking, not its strong suit. Really overclocking of any kind, not its strong suit. But the VRMs didn't explode. We got the 9900K to 5 gigahertz, so it's not all bad. Overclocking is not a strong suit. Don't get this board if you're going to do any sort of overclocking, really, except for maybe a CPU overclock. Unless you want, like, say, straight 5 gigahertz. You don't care about memory. You don't care about cache. You don't care about uh, really anything else but that speed. And you don't care what freq what voltage you have to, <laughs> to to use to get to it. Really, that's the only use case for overclocking on this board. Maybe it's better with lower end CPUs like an i3, but uh, yeah, definitely with a 9900K, not very good. So, do you get this board? It's $110, full ATX form factor, Z390, you can overclock. It's not great, it's not good, it's not bad either. Um, it works. You can throw a 9900K in here, overclock to five gigahertz, it works fine. I wouldn't say it's a good board, but it works. <laughs> and if you're on a really tight budget, I would probably just say save some money and get a better board. For like a top end 9900K, like a water cooling setup or a big air cooling setup, maybe not get this board. That was the review for the Azeroc Z390 Pro 4. I hope you liked it. I hope it was informative. Maybe ch change your mind or, or made up your mind to get or not to get this board. Uh, until next time, bye.